Okay. Now, okay, Amy. Okay, we are on. Well, I, I've got my office mate here. This is Carl. He is a one-year-old wire-haired pointing griffin, and he's going to help me give this presentation for as long as he will sit here on my lap at my countertop um, height desk. <laughs> so we'll see how long this lasts. Um, but Mindy, if you flip us forward one slide. There we go. Um, I'm going to start out by um, talking about um, that there are an estimated 68% of U.S. households that have a pet. And I just think that's really interesting. And Americans spend over $70 billion, or spend, I'm sorry, over $70 million on pets in the year of 2018. And so truthfully, people love their pets. And in fact, the New York Times did a, um, or I'm, not, I'm sorry, it was the New Yorker. They wrote a really neat article um, back in October, and it was called, it's raining, R-E-I-G-H, or R-E-I-G-N-I-N-E-G cats and dogs and it talks about the industry of pets and what we do for our pets and the lengths we go for our pets and you can see celebrities posting pictures about their pets and their relationships with their pets they sing to their pets they let their kittens take over their keyboards i think brian i see your cats on your lap right now um dogs and laps during meetings like mine is right now i read somewhere that arnold schwarzenegger delivered a stay at home um PSA starring his pet donkey and a miniature horse that he allowed into its kitchen. And my niece even told me that there is an, an Instagram-like social network for pets only. I think it's called Pets Petsby. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. And you give instead of likes, I think you give wags or barks or something like that, but it's a pet only um, site. Um, I think that pets give us a, a break from um, politics and from the media and from some of the stresses. And we're going to talk about that a little bit in light of um, COVID-19 and the pandemic. Um, but just a couple other kind of fun facts about pets. One in 10 people have a social, social media account exclusively for their pet. Um, this is in part because I think families really look at their pets as a legitimate member of their family. Um, I think you're seeing fewer days with some families that dogs are outdoor dogs or barn dogs. Um, I think, Mindy, you talked about that with me once, that dogs were meant to be outdoors, and now we've got dogs on Christmas cards. Um, but also, I think animals and pets, your cat, um, your bird, if, if you feel shy talking about yourself or just talking in general, it's easy to talk about a pet. And so if you've got them on social media, you've got photos, um, they give you talking points and they can help give you confidence. So today, because we love our pets, and we certainly saw that with many of you who participated in um, providing a photo, we had over 100 photos of pets. Um, so today we're going to talk about our pets. Um, so if you flip ahead, Mindy, before we get, you know, I gave a couple of fun facts, but we also wanted to give a shout out to National um, Rescue Dog Day, which is coming up on May 20th. And the reason that I wanted to give a shout out to this or that we did before we go on, and we're going to talk about it again at the end as a reminder, but also because if you're in the market for a pet or you're interested in getting another pet, maybe you can keep National Dog Rescue Day in mind um, that's coming up because a lot of pets need homes right now. And this wasn't necessarily just to be a shout out to go rescue a pet, um, but a lot of people are having to turn their pets in because of financial issues or different stresses. Um, and there's even opportunities to foster pets right now to volunteer and take them on walks or to be able to take them home. So we just wanted you to keep National Dog Rescue Day in the back of your head. And that's one reason we did this on the 12th instead of waiting until the 20th to give this presentation. Okay, Mindy. Let's see, do you want to forward Mindy to the slide um, about animal or pet therapy? Couple more. There we go. So I'm going to start out by talking a little bit about pet therapy, and um, again, talk about the power of pets. And pet therapy is really a blanket um, term. It includes animal assisted therapy and animal assisted activities. And just to to explain the difference between the two, because there really is a difference. AAA or animal assisted activities that has a more general purpose, such as providing comfort and enjoyment for hospital patients or nursing home residents. And you know that's more the um, the touchy fuzzy feely you know visits that animals can can bring and people can do with animals. It's fairly easy. I say that kind of with um, quotes to certify your dog with animal assisted um, activities. Um, I've talked before about the geriatrician William Thomas and how he talks about the three plagues of long-term care, boredom, helplessness, and loneliness. 
And he, back in the early 1990s, created a, a concept called the Eden Alternative. And that's when you brought plants and animals and children into facilities. And really, he looked at that as ways in which you can bring growth and cheer. And so I think of animal-assisted activity like that. It's about growth and it's about cheer. Whereas animal-assisted therapy, AAT, that's a growing field, um, but it has actual therapeutic or therapeutic or goal-directed interventions. It's led by a healthcare provider, oftentimes a licensed um, therapist or a social worker, and they incorporate animals like horses and dogs and cats, even pigs and birds, into treatment plans, and they document the progress. So it's really used to enhance and complement the benefits of traditional therapy. And it's really not for everyone either. I think that's important to say, you know, a lot of us are on this um, presentation today because we like animals, but animals really aren't for everybody. And so some of the benefits that, um, that come with pet therapy in general, you know, they help people through tough times. And this is kind of a combo slide with these bullet points of how animals provide, whether it's through activity or therapy, they provide a sense of calm, comfort, safety. They help divert attention away from stressful situations. They can distract kids from procedures that are going on. Um, there's even stories, actually, there's a story I'll read it to you. It was in a heel bulletin that we put out a couple of years ago, but there is a um, a fairly well-known um, physician up at the Mayo Clinic, and his name is Dr. Edward Cregan, and he admitted a patient to the hospital with advanced lung cancer, heart disease, pneumonia, and the man really wasn't even expected to live through the night, but due to teamwork and due to medicine, his condition improved, and the man kept talking about, I got to get better because I've got to go home to Max. And Dr. Cregan truthfully believed that Max was a family member, a loved one, uh, you know, a, a a son or you know a good friend and as the man um, came through better he was surprised Dr. Cregan was surprised when he learned that Max was his dog um, but Max gave that man a reason to live and a reason to get home and, and some purpose and so I think a lot of times we underestimate that type of power in pets as well um, you know there's all sorts of stories with kids after the um, Sandy Hook um, shooting um, a lot of animals were used um, to have the kids help tell their story and their experience of the story because kids were, they found that kids felt more comfortable talking to a dog than talking to the therapist, but the therapist was there and could listen and could hear. Um, so just some really neat, um, you know, ways in which we can use our pets. They, again, they divert our attention. They contribute to self-worth. Um, I used to have a Weimaraner who was an animal assisted activity dog. And there was a, a woman that we would visit every week in the nursing home. And I think that those visits to her brought her a lot of self-worth. It made her feel special because that dog, even though he was there to see other people, he, we, he, we and he had a special relationship with her. And it was just really neat to see that, very powerful. Um, all right, Mindy, if you flip forward. There we go. And so in general, well, okay, here, we'll talk about this one. <laughs> um, in general, pets help people, whether it's through a therapy setting or not a therapy setting. So they bring all these things in. And the research on pets is actually fairly new, newer than people realize. And the NIH talks about this a bit, that um, we, um, it's a growing field, uh, pet therapy in particular, but also um, just the information we know about the, the you know, how, um, animals do help us, but what we do think is that they bring us a sense of healing, a sense of peace, serenity. Um, the NIH does acknowledge that animals can make us happy. They can frustrate us too, but that they give us something to look forward to when we get home. They can bring us joy. They can make us smile. Um, and as a result, um, there's thoughts that it can re animals and pets can reduce stress and depression. Um, they can contribute, again, like I said, to a sense of purpose, they add meaning, they provide unconditional love, and they also enhance social support and decrease loneliness. And this was really one of the key factors that made us or influenced us to give this talk today, too. So, Mindy, if you flip to the COVID-19 sign, I want to specifically talk about ways in which um, pets are helpful right now during COVID-19. And so um, what we do know and what science is telling us is that um, especially for those who are alone, having a pet can fill your house. It gives you something to talk about. It gives you something to look forward to come home to. Some of the things I've already mentioned. Um, but also little things. Pets don't care if your hair has gotten too long or your roots have gotten too gray or even if you've had a bad day. 
Um, they tend to be silly, they tend to be sweet, they tend to like you, they tend to want to be around you, and that can help people just, you know, feel good. There's also a power in touching your pet and petting your pet. Um, petting a dog, and I'm sure this goes for a cat too, but for just 10 or 15 minutes a day can decrease stress, it can regulate your breathing, and it can release a variety of feel-good hormones, including one that's called oxytocin, and that's associated with bonding and affection. Um, they also help you, and um, we've had talks about this before in extension, but they keep you going. They help you maintain a routine and a sense of normalcy. So they can really motivate you um, to do things that are good for your own mental health, like walking and running, and Natalie's gonna talk about that here in a second. Um, but they help you, um, or they encourage you to do activities that you would normally part, you know, do during COVID-19 or not COVID-19. And an example may be just getting up in the morning. If you don't have to get to work by eight o'clock, you may have to get up because your pet has to go outside to go to the bathroom or may have to go for a walk or may need breakfast. Um, like we said, in therapy settings, they provide a distraction. Um, and I said this earlier too, and just why people think pets are important. Um, sometimes they just give you a break from the media and from the politics and from some of the other stuff that's going on in the background constantly, especially during the pandemic. Um, and again, overall, they just contribute to mental health. They reduce stress, they reduce anxiety particularly when you're experiencing a stressful situation like we all are right now with COVID-19. You know, there's just so many uncertainties right now with the pandemic and even more as we start to open the country back up. You know, Angie Bashir is doing a great job at keeping us healthy at home and, and now our next challenge is how do we stay healthy at work? And uh, it'll be interesting to see how these guys continue to, to help keep us calm. So I think now we are gonna, it's like the news, we're gonna have a live report on the street um, with Natalie Jones. And she's gonna talk a little bit more about the health benefits of, of pets in regards to physical activity. So take it away, Natalie. <laughs> yes, so um, this is live. So just giving patience with that, working with um, my dog, Corey. So I'm gonna show you her real quick, if I can figure this out. Um, so we are out walking in our neighborhood. So here's Cora girl. And so she is a rescue. And that's what we were um, just mentioning of just the importance of rescue and just how awesome they are. She actually comes from Mississippi. And so the Delta area. So she has been my companion for three years now. Um, and my running partner for sure. So um, actually, all the three pictures that you see there are from a run um, or an activity hike. And so um, definitely wanted an active dog to match my lifestyle. So really important to keep that in mind as well. And if you want to go ahead to the next slide. Mindy, if you want to go ahead and there we go. So one of the things that I wanted to point out, um, I'm sure a lot of us can relate to that meme there on the left of being on multiple walks, having our pets at home means obviously that they are kings and queens of quarantine. They are getting all the love and attention um, as well as maybe more walks and more activity than they're used to. And so what I wanted to point out um, is just in general, even before COVID-19, that pets make you move and that they increase your opportunity to be outside like I am today in green space um, as well as increasing your activity in the home so playing and rolling around and just enjoying time with your pet and so dog owners in general um, research has shown that they move 22 more minutes per day than someone who doesn't own a dog and so what I want to point out is that even if you may not think that walking your dog is exercise, it counts as physical activity and as movement and helps you reach your goal of what the CDC recommend, which is two hours and 30 minutes per week of moderate activity level. So that includes walking. And the more you walk, the healthier you are and the more benefits that you get. And so from walking, um, the benefits just from walking again that you can get with or without a dog is that it helps lower your risk of blood pressure, of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type two diabetes, and other conditions. So having a dog, I'm sure a lot of you guys know, I actually um, thought I wanted an active dog, love having an active dog, but again, she's a very active dog. So um, it is a lot to keep in mind. Uh, and she definitely has increased my movement when I just want to Netflix and chill and she is ready to play. So. 
Uh, if you want to go ahead to the next slide as well. Pets are so important for us, um, for physical activity, for movement, but also for our hearts. So not only do they fill us with love and excitement of seeing our faces and seeing them, they make us happy, but they also really improve our heart health. And so one of the things I want to point out, especially right now during COVID-19, is cardiovascular um, reactants um, to stress is that dog owners actually have research is just on dogs but I'm sure again it's with multiple pets as well is that their blood pressure um, doesn't get as high when they are involved with stress as well as if it does get high from stress then they're able to react um, and maybe interact with their dog and have a lower stress rate so then they don't get those negative health effects from stress. So again, it really helps with cardiovascular health um, in terms of your stress reactant, having a pet. They also show, again, with more um, health benefits of increasing your physical activity as well as the pet effect. And so Amy kind of touched on that earlier of how pets truly can help just by the touch, right? Just that calming effect that they have. Um, and so that can, again, link to lower blood pressure, reduce cholesterol, and decrease triglyceride levels, which are all great for our health and our overall human health. So having a pet, again, that touch, that calming effect, that partnership, as well as that increased movement is so important. And if you wanna go ahead to that next slide, Mindy, they also, are really helpful for kids. So if you know, I'm gonna give a shout out here to Dr. Norman Bergdorf. This is her son, Nolan, and her pet, Remy, here that you see. Um, so pets and children are really helpful um, in terms of they have a higher immunity, so you can develop um, immunity to different allergies and asthma, so it helps with reducing that risk. It also, like adults, helps kids get outside more. They go for walks, run and play, right? Enjoying all those health benefits we just talked about, as well as even like confidence. And we found that research found that emerging readers, like young kids are more comfortable talking aloud to a pet um, and practicing that reading skills than maybe they are to a human. So same thing that Amy mentioned of having a therapist there. They're just more comfortable being with a pet as well as you see here, it helps with responsibility, right? Taking care of a pet and what that looks like, as well as, again, impulse control, social skills, self-esteem. And this is my favorite for not only kids, but adults is how cuddling and being with a pet, again, right? Reduces that stress, um, loneliness and anxiety and something that is really important right now during COVID-19. And if you wanna to go to the next slide, we're gonna be talking about really what you can do right now for your pets during COVID-19. So that next slide, perfect. So this is coming from the CDC guidelines for COVID-19 and pets, is that you want to reduce um, the interaction of pets with people or animals who are outside of your home or outside of your household of who you are social distancing with. And then it's also been recommended that you keep cats inside. Again, walking dogs on leashes um, and making sure that we're practicing social distancing with our pet as well as with other animals is really important. That's six feet away. And right now, avoiding dog parks or public places where dogs and people might be gathering. And then if a family member becomes sick, uh, you want to isolate that person from people and pets. So just like you would a human, um, putting them, making sure that they aren't interacting with the, the family pets as well. Um, and so I do want to point out that there has been a dog that has gotten COVID-19, but they think that the reason why the dog got COVID-19 was because both of the parents were actually um, physicians and were handling healthcare cases with COVID-19 and exposed and tested positive then as well as um, were involved in a research study specifically and they tested the dog um, to find out. So they did, wouldn't have maybe known that the dog had it unless they would have been a part of that research study. So just to keep that in mind, 
Um, and then protecting your pet is really important again as well. So if you're sick or you suspect illness right now, restricting contact with your pet. I know that's really hard when we want that cuddle and we want that partner with us, but really smart to do that. And so if you are alone um, in a single household, make a plan for your pet in case of illness for you or for your pet as well. Um, if you have to interact with the pet, wear a face mask, wash your hands before and after touching your pet. And then if you have any concerns, call your vet. And most vets are still open, um, but just practicing social distancing. So they may come to your car and pick up your pet and bring it in while you stay in your vehicle. Also, you want to keep in mind that if you think or you have a concern about your pet having COVID-19, uh, making sure that you call your vet first. So just like you would as a human, um, calling your doctor before you went in or before um, you scheduled a visit, calling and making sure that everything is, is good to go. So again, protecting your pet right now is just as important because they are a family member and an important part of our communities. And so just making sure that you're protecting yourself and your pet during this time. All right, Mindy, I think it is your turn. Molly, uh, Mo Molly has fallen sound asleep. And so um, it's just gonna be me. You can see her black fur uh, on her screen. Um, but we have had Molly for um, seven years and she was a rescue as well. Um, she came into our life when we already had Daisy, who was our German Shepherd, and um, our boys were getting teenage years, actually they were well into their teenage years. And um, my husband said, you know, Molly's gonna need, or Daisy's gonna need a friend when the boys go off on their own. And um, I said no for a very long time, uh, but he happened to be volunteering at the shelter one day and he called and he said, you need to come down here. There's a border collie that you're gonna love because we had a border collie at, at home when I was growing up and he knew how, um, how much I loved Pele. So um, he was right, her brown eyes uh, got me a hello. And so um, Molly came home with us and she's been with us ever since. She has been, um, of course we had the big dog, the German Shepherd um, and Daisy had been with us a long time and, and she was established pretty much in our household. And so there was, um, a, a little bit of a challenge at times getting Molly um, to find her spot in, in the house. And, um, but she really has been a delight. And there are days, there were days I'm sure where Daisy said, I don't know why, who thought this was a good idea to bring another dog into our house. And then there were days that, that she really did love having that friend. Um, so Daisy passed away um, about a month and a half ago. And so Molly has been a great comfort to all of us. Um, as we have dealt with the loss of, of a pet, because that really is a, a part of um, your family uh, and, and your pet, pets are so important to every member of the family. And so um, Molly has done a great job of helping us grieve. Okay, so today um, Molly and I are going to share with you, maybe, we're gonna try. Um, we're gonna try sharing with you Molly's favorite treats that we make here at home. Um, and let me just move on to the next video and then we'll talk about them just a little bit. Baking dog cookies is easy. The ingredients are things that you probably already have on hand in your pantry. Supplies that you need to pull together include a large mixing bowl and mixer, two large baking sheets, rolling pin, and cookie cutter, pizza wheel, or knife. Now let's get started. Add four and one fourth cup of whole wheat flour to your mixing bowl. Add one fourth cup of honey. One half cup of unsweetened applesauce. One half cup of vegetable oil. Three fourths cup of water. One teaspoon of baking soda one tablespoon of ground cinnamon, and two eggs. Using a stand mixer with dough hook attachment makes the mixing and kneading process easy. 
but you can always use a hand mixer. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees. While your oven is preheating, roll out your dough to approximately one half inch thick. If you don't have a dough mat, roll your dough on a floured countertop. Use your favorite cookie cutter to cut out your cookies. I do have a dog bone shaped cutter, but it makes really large cookies, so we just use a seashell. These cookies don't spread, so use all of the space on your baking sheet. Both baking sheets of cookies can be placed in the oven together. Bake your cookies for 8 to 10 minutes. They'll be nice and firm when finished. If you knead the dough by hand, make sure it is smooth and elastic before you roll it out. A pizza wheel works great if you don't have cookie cutters to cut out nice strips of dough. Divide each strip into even rectangles. Leaving the cookies in a hot oven for one to two hours allows them to harden. Cooled cookies can be stored for up to two weeks in an airtight container. Enjoy! So Molly and I um, have been making treats for a long time. Uh, she loves vegetables and so um, sometimes I can just steam vegetables for her and that will be something that she really, really enjoys. Um, I've also cut uh, sweet potatoes into strips and dried them and she'll eat on them kind of like those yucky um, sow's ears or whatever that you can buy in the store. But uh, the idea of her chewing on, on a sweet potato sounds a whole lot better to me than, than that, uh, that other treat. So, um, but making the dog cookies is something that, that she waits for always. Um, she, she's ready to, to eat at any time, uh, or ready to bake at any time. Um, so I do have all of the ingredients listed here, um, because I know you might not have caught them as we moved through the presentation and afterwards we'll have a link to um, a just a, a picture uh, of the recipe um, and the ingredients are here I mean the instructions are here as well um, I love these cookies because they're very versatile so if I'm running low on whole wheat flour um, I can replace you know a half a cup or so with um, uh, rolled oats and I will put those in my food processor and kind of make an oat flour out of them and then add that to the whole wheat flour. I do not recommend replacing with all purpose flour because um, you probably, well, first of all, they won't last as long. Um, for some reason, they tend to mold if, if you use all purpose flour. So um, the extra fiber is also good to help move uh, Molly's bowels, just like it works for people. So um, stick with that whole wheat flour or add in some of your own um, oat flour. I'm also, I've also been known to replace um, half of the vegetable oil with um, peanut butter. And so I'll use a fourth cup of peanut butter and a fourth cup of oil um, in, the, in, in place of the half cup of oil. And then, um, like I said, Molly likes sweet potatoes. So if I am baking sweet potatoes for us for dinner, then I'll throw an extra sweet potato in and then I'll puree that sweet potato and use it in place of the applesauce. So I, it, you know, it's what you have in your pantry um, that you can use to make these dog treats. Um, as Amy mentioned earlier, we, May 20th is National Dog Rescue Day. So we thought that today was a good day to share about the power of pets and to help you get ready for National Dog Rescue Day. We also um, thought that if you are thinking about a pet, then maybe keeping the, the idea of, a, of National Dog Rescue in your head as you are um, making those decisions for your family, because it could be that, um, you know, your local shelter might even have a spe special going on if you, if they're going to um, be adopting pets that day. So perhaps that shelter pet is the one for you. I can tell you that our shelter, shelter pet um, has brought a lot of joy to our family. 
Um, so some things that you need to consider before you get a pet, um, of course, pets take commitment. Um, and as you move up the scale from goldfish to, to horses, um, you're gonna find that the commitment is significantly different um, depending on, on what type of animal or what type of pet you decide to bring into your family. Um, but we do want you uh, just to realize that becoming a pet parent is such a great responsibility. And if you are getting a pet for your children, then you wanna make sure that they're ready for that responsibility and they're aware um, of what the responsibility will be um, because probably you're gonna get a lot if they don't. So make sure that you're ready for that commitment. Um, pets are expensive. So um, just as we would advise that you need to budget for other items within your um, household, we certainly suggest that you plan a budget for your pet. And your um, recurring expenses are gonna be food and um, you know, uh, grooming. Uh, if you have to do any type of boarding while you're working or, or that sort of thing, those, that would be a recurring expense. And then um, those one-time expenses or maybe um, intermittent expenses might be um, a, a pet dog house or a pet house or you know a, a pet bed. Um, you might even check with your work because many um, employers provide pet insurance now because caring for a pet is very um, expensive on the medical end. And so if you have, if your employer provides pet insurance and that it's a really great idea to maybe help cut some costs um, in that respect. Um, especially if you have a, a pet that has um, si some type of a chronic disease or even if they get, um, you know, a, 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 an unfortunate event. Um, our Daisy had cancer when she was um, nine years old, but uh, we had the, the tumor removed and she lived um, a little bit more than five years after that. So it, it was really beneficial to um, have that care available to give her. Pets take time. Um, like I said, not only are they a commitment, but they do require a lot of time. As Natalie said, you do need to exercise them. Uh, your goldfish, you don't have to exercise as much since you're providing exercise within the environment. But, you know, a, a large dog like a German Shepherd that we had and, and that Natalie has, or, you know, uh, we've got a couple of Great Danes that live in our neighborhood. Those dogs take a whole lot of um expense or a time to to make sure you get them out and exercise so um you know time and exercise are two things that go hand in hand because in addition to um the the benefits of exercise as natalie and and amy both said you know spending that time with your pet is also um good for you and good for them um, you want to make sure that the pet fits your lifestyle. So if you're pretty low maintenance um, and you don't have a lot of time to give, then maybe that goldfish is the right thing for you. Um, however, you know, some of the more exotic um, fish might require special um, aquariums or special water or special um, things that you have to, to um, put in the water, just additives that go in the water. Um, so just think about what your level of um, lifestyle change is going to be. Um, we, we've uh, never had a, a hamster or a rat, but we did have a bunny rabbit once. Uh, we thought that was one of those animals that you wouldn't have to uh, spend a lot of time with, but you do. Uh, they want to have interaction just as much as, as anyone else. And they have these great big teeth that you have to um, be careful about because they'll chew everything in sight. Um, so that's, that's always fun. Um, pets do need training. Even if you adopt an older pet, they might need to, um, you know, depending on what their lifestyle was before they came to you, there might need a certain level of um, training, even if they're already house trained or, or that sort of thing. Uh, when Molly came to us, she was about a year old and the reason her previous owners gave her up, they said, was because she jumped on their car. Well, we never really had a problem with Molly jumping on her car. We, we suspect that she might have been abused though because she didn't like to go outside when we first got her. Um, and so we think that maybe they just tied her up outside and left her there and maybe she jumped on their car to get their attention. We're not really sure what happened, but we do, um, we do know that she just did not like going outside. So um, 
over, over the years, she has changed and she, she does like to go outside, but she still doesn't like to go outside unaccompanied. She wants somebody with her when she's outside. So um, even eight years later, she, she still has some of those effects. Um, and then you want to make sure that your pets live in a pet friend or that you're bringing a pet into a pet friendly home. So remember that dogs are, or pets in general, are not going to adapt to you. You need to adapt to them um, because they're not going to know exactly what it is that um, you expect of them when they first come in. And so you need to make your home as, as um, safe and secure for them as possible. And then, of course, and this probably should have been up at the very top, but um, do your research because you probably do want to research your pets as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, before you even make the investment um, of, of time and money, because if it's a dog or a cat or a gerbil that's not going to work out well in your home, then, then you don't want to go ahead and do that before you, you learn that. So that gives you an opportunity to, to kind of get some information about the pets that you might be interested in. Um, and so we're going to invite you to join us for the next um, week on my best friend challenge. And so we hope that you will take pictures of your animals um, and share them on social media and make sure that you tag us at UKFCSEXT and we will be able to all see your pets and all of the pets that are being um, shared across the state. So and I don't think we're hoping that people in your communities will share too. Is that right, Mindy? Exactly. Yes. So we hope that you will see, um, you know, pets popping up all here, there, and everywhere uh, from maybe your next door neighbor or, or somebody across town, you know, that you'll have all of, we'll have pets showing up everywhere. And like I said, don't forget to tag us, whether you're on Facebook or on Instagram, um, our tag is the same. And so you can use that um, and we'll be able to see all your pets as well. Let's see. So what questions do you have for Natalie, Amy, or myself? I hear, I hear animals. Oh, Molly just woke up. I think she's hearing what Corey is hearing. So I'm not, my uh, sh chat screen is not sharing, showing. Sally, do we have any questions? No, Mindy, no questions right now. They just want the recipe that you said you would post later. So you might want to just repeat where that will be yes. at. So we, we will have that in um, Facebook. If you are not uh, watching us on Facebook, but are watching us on Zoom, if you would send an email to UK fcsext at uky.edu, then we can get a copy of that recipe to you. I did want to mention, um, and I forgot to do this earlier, but if you are changing your pet's rest or diet in any way, you of course want to con consult their um, veterinarian when you do that. There are lots and lots of internet sources for recipes and ideas for things that you can do um, with for their food. And just as we would not recommend that you get your nutrition information from the internet, we also recommend that you don't get your nutrition um, suggestions from the internet for your pet. And so we do suggest that you talk to your veterinarian if you're making any changes or even, you know, just adding something new to the diet. Well, we hope you guys can take some pieces of this and have some fun with it and do some things in your own communities just to, you know, one, just, you know, to give a shout out to our pets and all that they're doing for us, but things that we can do for them um, to really just get that message out there loud and loud and clear. Natalie, any final thoughts? So just stay active and stay healthy and keep loving those pets and they'll love you right back. That is true. They will indeed. Thank you all for joining us. Um, we are going to be back on Thursday. Um, Dr. Alex Ellswick will be coming back uh, to talk to us about the effects of COVID-19 on um, substance use and abuse. And so, um, 
we will be here at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, same time or same place, not same time, but same place. So hope we'll see you all on Thursday as well.